Our next leg, we are going to. I'm going to introduce you to our doctoral candidate who will be um, who will be presenting for us today. So this is also quite exciting for me to introduce you to Mr. Bensel Kotze, who has 23 years of international experience as a CEO in various industries. So he had a lot of exposure to and, and therefore exceptional insight into the effects of informed and timely decision making which is a key factor for sustainable growth. And according to him, the biggest lessons that he has learned through all his experience is to find the right people, look after them and develop them. It says that machines can be upgraded and replaced, but those individuals who drive your current and future, future strategies are irreplaceable. So let them grow with your vision. And then just finally, Wenzel is also a very keen and talented and talented wildlife photographer, um, which he says is not just his passion, but also his obsession. So in terms of his um, doctoral studies, he is looking at finding a balance between what drives success in the cooperative engagement of innovation, human effort, the incorporation of technology and the art of sustainable practices. In order to believe this balance, he argues a clear understanding of the value of the human contribution through an analysis of successful leadership is required. So he therefore aims to identify the leaders that comprehend these ideals and habits with the aim to harness insights from them to develop future sustainable thinkers. So Wenzel, we are very excited to have you here and we are looking forward to your presentation and to listening to what you have to say and the progress you are making on your doctorate. So, Wenzel, over to you. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Van Zell, for introduction. Um, yes, I've been working for myself for the past 28 years, and some of it up, some of it down. But it's been ex extremely fascinating to see how business has changed over the past 28 years. Um, in this period of time, at any given point, I must have had roughly about 180, 200 people working for, for our company. And, and that gave me a, basically 180 chances to get to get people's employment wrong or get it right. Dr. Van Zell, you've been you've been part of my masters. Um, I'm a Levinsian in my masters, and you would know best that I'm not a, a natural academic at all. I don't do this for the for the knowledge not to implement, or I do it for the knowledge to implement, not just the knowledge for the title. So on the academic side, I hold a qualification in construction management from TUT, a BBA from Norwich University, my master's from Da Vinci, which I'm very proud of, and now working towards my PhD at Da Vinci as well. So here's the title of my, of my dissertation, Managerial Development, a Sustainable Approach. You will see it says they to be confirmed. It's something that can change, and at the moment, I had my oral defense eight weeks ago and I'm still, I'm still working on the title. It might stay as this, it might change. Um, as the research um, continues and new light on the research starts developing, you might fall into a different direction because once you decide on your research topic, it doesn't mean it's gonna end the way that you plan it from day one. You might find out that your research idea is not palatable or, or, or it's not sustainable and therefore this might change. At the moment it stays as it is. Um, the research problem, and I'm not gonna just simply cut and paste things now from my, from my proposal. I want to be the, this to be a more social interaction regarding my, the research problem. At the moment it's 2022, and a company that does not have a roadmap and a strategy as we sit today is in trouble. Now, it's easy to blame COVID. Everybody says, yes, but COVID changed, COVID changed this and that. A lot of companies were already in, in trouble before COVID. They were laying off people, losing their market share, um, not acting quick enough on market impulses. So if you don't have a proper roadmap and a strategy today in your business, you will be almost like a runner doing a marathon on a treadmill. Um, although you're going nowhere, you're making good time. So what can we do immediately that can help us getting this strategy and roadmap cemented into our business? And how quick can that happen? Because nobody can tell me at this point in time that we've lost our market share 
and we will fix it by next Friday. It's not going to happen. Now, being a Da Vincian, I subscribe to the to the manager to, to the framework, the general framework of tips: technology, innovation, people, and systems thinking. If we look at those four those four constructs, and let's just stick first with technology, innovation, and people. What can we change to make this happen? Let's look at technology. If you if you want to change your business from uh, assembly line with people to assembly line with automation and robots. Will that happen by next week, Friday? No, it takes vast amounts of resources, planning, you might need a new building. So yes, technology plays a role, but technology is uh, an advancing future sort of uh, approach and not an immediate approach. Innovation, well, innovation, you might have to employ a set of people to do your innovation. Innovation will take time. Um, product innovation takes five, eight years sometimes from, from, from inno innovation to, to the consumer. So there is not a quick fix either. People. Can you hire the right people? Now, it was fascinating listening to our guest, and I was hoping to ask another question. My, ask, my question was going to be, do you think we have the right people in the right place? And there's the one thing that we can change immediately. Because we have the people, we have the resources, it doesn't have to be large volumes of resources, but we can do people development and placing the right person at the right position is now critical. Um, and then to decide who is the best suited for this. Um, $535 billion was spent four years ago in America on personnel development. And the overall feedback from that was within 14 days, people fell back into their old routines. Why is that? Are we spending the resources on the correct people? And if we do, how do we decide who to actually develop? Or are we doing it blank? We're saying that this whole division must be developed. Let's do the whole division. But if we don't do that, how do we decide which, 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 which parameters to use and which lens to use to decide on this. Because if we use something from the psychological world, is it something that's current? Or are you using something, a lens that was developed in the 1950s or 70s? Now, I'm sorry to say, not many things from the 1950s at the moment fits into modern day business. If we think of tips, for instance. So is there something out there that we can use that can help us with this? Um, we should also start looking at doing away with an umbrella approach because we understanding the mess and what can what, what we can do to avoid the as it could be state because if we ignore all these signs we will end up as the in the as it could be state the aim and objectives of my study a practical approach if we then look at people not everybody are leaders not all belong where they are but let's find and mold the people into their best position. If you're going to be the best HR, let's make all, you have the inclination to be the best HR, let's make you the best HR. Because once you are the best HR, why should we then move you to reduction because you were the very good HR? Leave you where you fit. Because the solution in this is, is early identification of the correct individuals. How often do we find um, I found it in my business. I have three people in my business and one decides to resign. And I let the person resign just to find out six to 12 months later, maybe 24 months later, that person was actually the correct person in, the, in, in that position. I slipped up by not developing the person further and helping the person to, to, to fulfill his dreams within my business without letting him go. Because all I did was I wasted resources for six, 12, 24 months in bringing the person up to a certain level, just not to make sure he fits in there perfectly, him going off to my competition and I lose that value of the time. I then, use, I then lose all that value. If you, look at, if you look at the analysis tools then that might be usable to decide this, um, nothing out there at the moment is a current fit. We need to co-develop something, a new lens built on something that is more current for current situations. If we think sustainability, currently all businesses are gunning for sustainability. 
They want to, to expand their life, their lifelong um, providing for communities, for their workers. And if we don't find an offer and a correct fit for our people at the moment, that sustainability um, will definitely fall away. So what is out there at the moment? What is out there that we can use so we can decide on who are these people that we can develop? Um, the Myers-Briggs um, Psychological Personality Types, it was developed in the 1940s and 50s by a mum and daughter team, um, Catherine Briggs and Isabel Briggs Myers. It focused on 16 personality types. Uh, sorry for the quality of that. I couldn't find a high resolution of that. But if you take the top left-hand corner, it says ISTJ. That stands for introversion, sensing, thinking, and, judge and judging. There's 16 profiles of those. Um, developed in the 1940s and 50s, like I said. Now, if you fall into that top left-hand corner, you are quietly systematic, factual, organized, logical, detailed, conscientious, analytical, responsible, pragmatic, critical, conservative, decisive, stable, concrete, and efficient. Wow. Send me please then one block of each of these. I'll employ all of them because it sounds incredible to have these people in your business. Developed in the 1940s and 50s. The next one up is the Gallup Strength Finder. It was developed by Donald Clifton in the 1990s. It's an instrument that assesses 34 talents all based on the precepts of positive psychology. And these positive attributes are seen as naturally occurring patterns of thought. Individuals are then categorized into these four quadrants, influencing, um, relationship building, executing, systematic thinking. Next up, but closer to home, is the Herman Brain Dominance Instrument, developed by, in the 1970s by Ned Herman. It focuses on four thinking preferences. In the 1980s, Quibus Nietling, South African guy, very successful in this, um, divided the original four quadrants into eight, providing additional insight that's usually successful in the market at, the prop, at, at present still. So I mentioned earlier, what will work today? What is the one thing we need for 2022 plus that can be more, I can I say more applicable? Right. My, my research will delve deeper into shadow mats. It was developed in South Africa and launched in 1999 by Mr. Peter de Villiers. At present, and I, I know de Vinci is quite um, familiar with shadow mats. Ms. Montana, I'm not sure if you are or some of the guests. Um, it's an incredible program. At the present, they have over 214,000 completed worksheets and there is continuous development um, on this front. Um, there's even a further 17 constructs that they measure that is still, still really there for development that they haven't done. Where the other lenses mainly focus on personality types, brain dominance and thinking preferences, shadow match focus on 19 mainline habits. They quantify that into a score out of 100. Plus, it also measures time and conceptual fitness for attitude categories and your task efficiency. This is what it looks like. It gives you your 19 um, um, habits at the bottom. It gives you a score out of 100 and gives you a strength in that. It is different to the other, to the other lenses or the other analysis tools because it focuses only on, on, the, on individual habits. I'm, gonna put, I'm just going to stop there for a second and just ask the following to you. How come two people are identical? Let's say they both come from, no, let, let's put it this way. This lady works for BMW. She's a, a hugely successful sales lady at BMW, and she sells the most vehicles in Midrand year on year or month on month for the last 24 months. She gets posted by Audi. Audi takes her over in Midrand as well, and quality for quality, the products are identical, identical. But she does not, she does not, she does not do well at Audi at all. The dealership is usually successful. It sells even more than BMW used to, but she does not cut the mustard there. Why is that? Why does she come from one environment to the other and it doesn't work for her? One of the things that Shadow Match will lift out to you is the environment that she, that, that she now moved into. The habits of that environment 
does not fit her, or her overall habits. And that's where the crux of this, this study lies. I want to look at, at two things. I want to approach proven tipsters. Now, a tipster is a person, I just gave the name of tipster. That is a person that has proven through the TT100 program from Da Vinci. It is the winners of the TT100. Because those are CEOs and general managers that proved that they use tips because it's part of the, of the structure of, of TT100 is the implementation of tips. So once they're in the winner's circle, they are tipsers that's been proven. And I want to analyze these tipsers and make up a blueprint from their habits. Because once I have a blueprint of a tipsers habit, I can say that to be a successful corporate leader and you're a tipser, your blueprint of habits look as, fo look as follows. Because once this is done, I can then overlay any other manager or exco or junior manager or just any other employee onto this habit formation of a successful tipster. And that will show to us, hopefully, if, if, if the research continues and in the right direction, will show to us who of the people in my business has a tips mindset and a leadership mindset that is conducive to sustainability. Because all the TT100s that are winners and are tipsers operate in successful businesses with a sustainable mindset incorporating technology, innovation, people and systems thinking. So let me just repeat that if someone maybe missed me. If I can make a blueprint of the habits, remember now there's nothing right or wrong with a habit, it's a habit. But if I can find out, if shadow mates can, 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 can do this for us and give me a shadow of the habit of a successful tipster in TT100 and I measure anybody else onto that, it will tell me who in my business is the ones that I need to develop, who's the ones that I cannot afford to let go to my competition, although he hasn't shaped maybe to all the levels that I want him to, his thinking ways and his habit is already right there. This is the person I need to spend time on. Now, this can happen, I'm mentioning it now in a, in a corporate structure like TT100, but imagine this, for instance, in a sales environment. Let's say um, in BMW, if I had a shadow of the best salespeople of the BMW group countrywide, I take the best 20 and I make a shadow of those and we then match whoever comes into their business as new salespeople onto the shadow and see what the habits, let's say that one of the habits of a successful salesperson is he's always on time or he has a propensity not to hand off important tasks because it has been proven in the shadow that that is an important or a very high ranking habit. If I get someone in and tells me, oh no, I never hand off important things, but his propensity to hand off shows as 13 out of 100. He was not honest and truthful in that. Then you must maybe relook that person because your shadow of the successful people shows that the propensity to hand off must be high. That's the person that keeps his deals and keeps his success. I'm not in the BMW business. I'm not into salespeople. I'm here in this study to decide who is my people that I can identify at the most earliest time in their careers to decide who must I spend money on to develop and keep in my business. Then getting to my research questions, as a primary research question, who is the tipsers out there? How do we identify them early and with what method? I already gave some clues into that. And can they lead future thinking organizations sustainably? Now, TT100 is my, is my foundation for that. They've already proven that. But as a primary question, I need to satisfy that question to make sure that the person that I choose as my part of my control group has a proven track record through tips and a proven track record in success in, in, in corporate. As a, a sub-question, why shadow match? Why this tool? What makes shadow match the perfect match with tips? Um, and why is it relevant now? Why? Because it's developed in the 1990s. It has continuous development. It, it doesn't deal with brain types or thinking patterns. It has to deal with habits. It's the only one dealing with habits. Sub-question two, 
which what should be measured under which criteria? What must I link? What will provide us the desired knowledge? What must I link? I must be able to link to the research. Must, I must be able to link tips with those habits. I'm very, I'm very fortunate. One of those habits, for instance, is innovation. And one of those habits has to deal with technology. How do you accept technology in your life and how do you, how do you employ technology? One of the habits of three or four of the habits deal specifically how do you deal with people, how do you in groups of people, do you prefer to work with people, not as a habit, not as a work skill. And the last sub question, how can the, how does this lens, for instance, filter info so, we, so that we can identify who is the future tipsers that we are looking for? Because once we found them early enough, we can bring them through the ranks of the business. And let's just think now again, implementation. Let's think government seeing that our, our guest was speaking from that platform. And how powerful if we know now already who to spend the money on in government that will lead this country in 20 years from now and not find out by, by trial and error, but maybe more towards something scientifically proven as a study. My research design and methodology, if we get into the nuts and bolts of this, my research philosophy um, will be a combination of interpretism and pragmatism. My research approach, um, abductive. In my research, um, um, are on the fence. I was unsure about this. I still had inductive and a combination of deductive. And Professor Singh actually alerted me to that and directed me um, towards abductive. I did a lot of work on it and I agree with him. My methodological, methodological choice is mixed method, simple. My research strategy is grounded theory. Again, uh, in my master's, um, there were some questions regarding grounded theory and qualitative and quantitative. I'm not going to go into that, but it has been um, set and proven by Kramer in 2021 that you can use grounded theory in both those. Time horizon will be cross-sectional because I'm only working with a specific snapshot in time within this TT100 foundation. And it's another longitudinal study that runs over years. It's a snapshot of current information. My data collection and analysis will be criteria selection. Um, ethical clearance is a process. I've already applied for my ethical, ethical clearance. Um, I'm very fortunate again that um, Shadow Match is obviously anonymous. They already satisfy strict industry regulations and I will follow the, the Da Vinci system for ethical clearance in terms of um, the people I approach, the way we approach them, interviews, questionnaires and so forth. Um, bear in mind again that the information I'm, I'm gathering um, is anonymous but also there's no right or wrong answers. The habit formation doesn't have that. It's a formation and not uh, a criteria if you're correct or not. Um, as a conclusion, I love the first photograph on the top left. Just because you fit doesn't mean you belong. Just because you belong doesn't mean you fit. And if I can go back to the front of this presentation saying that we tend to, and I've done it many, many times my own, in my own businesses where I take someone that, that I like and I try to bring that person up to the ranks it doesn't always mean that's the correct person for the job because it looks like the person fits until we open up and we see there's a nudgy in the middle of a, of a, of a, a garlic clove. On the, re on the right hand side bottom, um, John C. Maxwell, the single biggest way to impact an organization is to focus on leadership development. There's almost no limit to the potential of an organization that recruits good people, raise them up as leaders and continue to develop them. And that everybody is the end. Thank you so much for that, Wenzel, for that um, really insightful presentation. That was um, really interesting to listen to, and I really like the concept of your PhD. So let's hear from the audience. Uh, Wenzel, please tread very, very carefully um, in psychometrics. Big shadow match. But your ISTJ was a very unfortunate choice. The MBTI has been updated it is the longest uh, longitudinal study ever done on a psychometric instrument. I don't know if you've heard of the CPA. I don't know if you've heard of the risks. I don't know if you've heard of the Hogan. 
No, I have read some of the, I haven't delved any, any deeper into that. Um, there is okay. a wide field of, of psychometrics and shadow mass does not, shadow mass does not fall under psychometrics. But yet when you do the MBTI, you've, you use the ISTJ, which does fall under psychometrics. Yes, um, yes, but the but the but the brain dominance. Uh, I mentioned those as as lenses that I had a look at to see if they if they can be a fit. And after after reading up and doing my research on those lenses, they were not a fit at all. I used them to say that these this is what is available out there, but they are yeah. not a fit for this study at all. Okay, but my point is. Once you start looking what's out there, you're going to be looking for quite a while because there are numerous instruments from numerous companies. Just, um, just so yes. you know. Um, thank you for that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, at the research, at, the, at this stage, I could, couldn't find anything in the end that was positive linking um, the concept to, for instance, tips where technology, innovation, and people, and system thinking in a, in a lesser way is connected to habit formation uh, or, or to anything else. So habit formation at the moment um, is the link on two tips. Um, let's hear from Janet. Yes, Janet. Hi, everybody. Hello, Vincent. Nice to see you again. Hi, Janet. Um, <laughs> I'm going to kind of follow on from, from the last question or the last comment. Uh, also, I have some concerns about the choice of tool, um, there is an awful lot of questioning, I think, going on generally around psychometric tools at the moment, understanding them as lenses, that none of them is necessarily 100% accurate. Um, I've done quite a lot of work recently on 21st century leader skills, and I've, um, I've also trained using Shadow Match. And when I look, and I've just had a very quick look at it again now. One of the things that I think is desperately miss or, or clearly missing from Shadow Match is thinking skills um, and thinking habits, which I think are critically important in the 21st century. Um, I know that there's at least one study being done recently at Davinci where somebody did a study on. 21st century leader skills. Um, I can try and find it and, and give it the reference to you. But I'm just also raising a, a little bit of a, a caution to say maybe just to think very, very clearly around what is this leader that we're looking to for the future. Um, and I think so much has shifted in the last 10 years, five years never mind going back as far as 1990. It's not to say Shadow Match is not a good lens. It's just, is it, it's certainly not a perfect lens. And no, is I it, agree with that. Is it's it relevant to right now what's actually happening yeah. in the world? So so that's just, yeah, some things for you to think about. Um, uh, there's a book that you might find interesting. Uh, a woman called Margaret Heffernan wrote a book called Uncharted. And she has a chapter in that book where she specifically critiques psychometrics. And it's maybe just worth kind of going through that perspective um, as, as you're working on this. But very interesting concept. Janet, really, thanks. really interesting concept. I'll, I'll answer you on that quickly and just say again that, bear in mind, I'm not looking for something. I'll, my study is not about telling us what good leaders should do. My study is about to say, as a proven leader through TT100 that employs tips, what what does the shadow what does their shadow look like? Mm -hmm. and, and, and within that, a lot of a lot of people will fall out and say that because if I only have a seventy five percent match in that, that's already good. Because yeah. I'm I'm looking at what is a good proven successful leader. What does his habit formation look like? And I'm not going to change people's habits. There is a way to change it, but that's another study. Mm -hmm. it's, it's to say that. If my company CEO has the following habits and he's hugely successful and his exco has similar habits and we can we can see that, if I then want to bring up people through the ranks within this company, it makes most probably sense that this person will have at least some overlay shadow on that on that successful group because that is a good start at least. Because like, again, if you're yeah. in, uh, at the moment I'm doing project management, if you're in a project management environment. 
and you're not time conscious, you will not be a good product man project manager. If you, so if you work for an engineering firm, a large civil engineering firm, and you have the worst time management, you will be one of the worst engineers to actually bring up through the rank. Because in the end, they will employ someone to help you keep time. So that's all I, that's all I want to link. So in, in the end, my, my research hopefully will link that strong enough to tips to say, if we follow this and the person has tips within that, there's a, a good chance that this person will follow that success recipe of a TT100 leader. Cool, Ben, so maybe one other thing just to think about, having also been an adjudicator at TIPS, uh, at TT100, is the TT100 isn't evaluating individuals, it's evaluating an organization. So that's just a question yes. to, uh, to I'm consider. I'm aware of that, because what I'm gonna do in my, in, in my focus group, I will evaluate those leaders individually through shadow match. So I'll, I'll, I'll get the actual CEOs and the exco to, to, to do, hopefully to do this when you accept this as a way to improve their own business. But that's another that's another issue. So yes, it's 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 not the individual, it's the company, but the individual drives the the, the, the direction and the decision making. Very interesting concept. Thank you. All the best. Thank you, Janet, and thank you for that contribution as well. So, Benzel, something that I was just thinking about while you were presenting, and I find this really interesting, and it's always interesting to see patterns and, you know, what are those patterns and can we actually find a pattern? But I was just thinking, and I mean, I guess that's what your research will do as well, what happens if you don't find a pattern? So, if there isn't a pattern in terms or if there isn't a correlation between um, the shadow match profile and the success of the company or the success of the leader, so that for me is just always, um, yeah, it's an interesting challenge, but I guess that's something that your research will um, point out to you. Apologies, we ran out of time. So um, I think we should just hand over to Lita then to um, do a summary for us. So thank you very much, Benzel, and good luck with your studies. And um, yeah, I would like to encourage you to get into contact with Diewald. And then I'm going to hand over to Lita to conclude for us. Thank you, Lita. So, so let me share the visual summary with you. So managerial development, a sustainable approach, it's a working title, it might change. A company without a strategy is in trouble. It's like a marathon runner on a treadmill. At least they're making good time, but they're not getting anywhere. If we look at the tips, um, framework, technology, innovation, people and systems, none of those are quick fixes. Probably the easiest thing to fix would be having the right person in the right job at the right time. Leave people where they, where they fit best. Um, it's about earlier identification of the correct people and making sure that they are in the correct jobs. So the type of um, psychometrics and, and profiles that you looked at, MBTI, Strengths Finder, the whole brain, um, you really identify shadow match as the most appropriate analysis tool that can help you identify individuals with high probability of success. Looking at a proven track, rec track record like the winners of TT100, um, creating a blueprint of those habits. What are the individual habits? How do they um, show the tips and mindsets so that we can start predicting which people do we need to spend money on and how do we retain them? Um, what makes the best BMW salesperson, for example, as an example that you that you uh, put there. Just because you fit, it doesn't mean that you belong. Just because you belong, it doesn't mean you fit. We need to make that link back into what are the habits that good leaders will show so that we can make better um um, a bit of successful stories at the end. And that is the a very quick um, visual summary. Dr. Celia, back over to you. Thank you so much for that, Lita. I am always in awe of how you do this. I don't know how you do it. I think you're a ninja or maybe it's witchcraft. I don't know, but I mean, I'm just always in absolute awe of what you managed to accomplish. So thank you for that very accurate and comprehensive summary. Um, really appreciate it and it was lovely to have all of you here. So thank you very much everyone and goodbye. Okay.